here's Brody Brazil. Okay, so this is the ultimate crossover video, the state of the A's and Sharks all in one pass. Now, I know what you're saying. Like one season just ended. The Oakland A's season is just kind of getting underway. They're a little more than 20 games in. So how could I combine these two? Why am I trying to time this out? Well, yes, they are my primary responsibilities here at NBC Sports, but they've also been my passion for an entire lifetime of 40 plus years so far. Am I to prove it? You need to see the receipts? Okay. April 3rd, 1994. I guess that was my, yeah, it was my 13th birthday. There I am. I, I must have just got that Sharks jersey. And then I know for sure that picture on the right, that was me wearing the A's jersey, Halloween of 1989, just a little bit removed from the A's winning that World Series. So yeah, I've, I've, I've been passionate about these two franchises here in the Bay Area for quite some time. What I'm about to say here, it all comes from a place of passion and love and optimism and hope for the future. But it's interesting right now between the A's and the Sharks, there are some amazing contrasts. There's also some amazing commonalities. But I think the biggest level thing that I could say one sentence that would apply to both the Sharks and the A's as professional sports franchises on and off their respective playing surfaces is that there's just a lot going on. It's a busy time for the Oakland A's. It's a busy time with the San Jose Sharks. And coincidentally, I get headaches a lot of times because I invest my work, I invest my my passion, my thoughts into this stuff. I make tons of YouTube content on it. So there's a lot to talk about between these two teams. I wish they got more attention wide scale. I wish I wasn't one of the only ones talking about these teams on a regular basis, but I digress more on that a little bit later. As for the A's, their top headlines are twofold, and they are obvious. On the field, in terms of players, like they've just done one of those recycles, reshuffles, reboots, whatever you want to call it, when you trade away an Olsen, a Chapman, a Bassett, a Manaya, and there may be more to come, and you've called up exciting players like Christian Pache. Can I? There we go. Um, It's been really fun to watch him do his thing. So the the rebuild is stressful, not entirely instantly rewarding, but yeah, we'll we'll see how this one goes. But that's a big deal. A's fans are talking about that. There's also the stadium pursuit, and that has a bunch of different layers to it. The Oakland side, the politics side, Howard Terminal side, lawsuit side, binding vote side, Las Vegas side, fans and their interest and their attention. Like, there are so many, like I said, layers to that. So all of these things, it's just a, it's a lot to talk about. It's a lot to consume and digest at once. Some MLB franchises are going through a rebuild and that's it. Other teams like Tampa, they're also trying to get a stadium too. And that's it. But to have two of these things going on, like, yeah, it's a lot to think about and it's a lot to talk about. Coincidentally, I switch gears to the San Jose Sharks. Now, They just made franchise history of the negative variety. It's the first time ever that Team Teal has missed the postseason three straight tries. Now, they have been interesting hockey seasons. Like the first of these three tries was a season cut short after 70 games. The middle year of these three was last year. Was it 56 games? Like there was a condensed season. You only play in your own Western division. The pandemic's still going on. And then this year was a more normal year, but was it really? Like... In October, November, a bunch of teams, December, a bunch of teams were missing a bunch of players due to COVID. They had to cancel the Olympic participation and break. Anyway, it was more normal, but still not entirely what we know a hockey season to be. And I'm not making an excuse uh, for the team in that case. They went on respective seven and 10 game losing streaks in this calendar year of 2022 already. But yeah, the playoff rut is something to definitely take notice of. It's the first time it's ever happened. You hope that it ends at the end of this season. You hope that next year is an opportunity to go back to the Stanley Cup playoffs. But there's also off the ice, the new general manager search, which we do understand that by now it's getting underway. There's going to be several rounds and waves of this search, and it is a pivotal thing. I see it two ways. Number one, Could it be a general manager who wants to bring in their own vertical, like 
the general manager wants to bring in a new head coach. The GM wants to bring in some new scouts that they trust. And they want to, I don't know. I don't know what the Sharks as a franchise are going to do. Could it be that? Or could it be just a GM to kind of slide in that piece and then the vertical stays the same with front office staff, scouts, the head coach, Bob Bugner? Again, I, I am not here to predict one or the other, but I do think it does come down to one option or the other. Somebody new installed either brings with them a team of people or they are the individual that will be surrounded by a group that has had a lot of success over the years. But the new GM search following the tenure of Doug Wilson, 19 years at that job, yeah, it's a bit it's a bit jarring to think about what's next for this franchise with some big decisions to make, some big contracts for the team, some emerging players that decisions will have to be made on that, the Weisblatt's, the Coes, the uh, Eklund's. I mean, there, there are so many critical decisions to be made for this franchise, and somebody's going to have to jump right in with their feet already moving. So going back to the A's, interesting. I've, I've talked about some commonalities here, a lot going on. This one's kind of a huge contrast. The Oakland A's right now are trying to secure a brand new home at Howard Terminal. This is a difficult project. It's a detailed project. I think it's a fully worthwhile project. I mean, there's no question about it. I would not be so supportive if I thought there was anything, really anything negative about it. Um, there are lots of good things to come for Howard Terminal, but the A's are working so hard on this, right? They're trying to secure a new home in a particularly untapped place just north of Jack London Square. Meanwhile, the San Jose Sharks, they have a long-standing perfect home at SAP Center, downtown San Jose, kind of just adjacent to the downtown core, but they are trying to protect their longtime home from being basically suffocated, from being built around in several different projects. And I know people are, are largely talking about the Google Downtown West project, but there are several projects that are going to kick off in coming years that, like I said, could suffocate SAP Center. If there are multiple construction projects, roads being narrowed, parking lots straight up disappearing around SAP Center, that is largely going to impact the fan experience at this building. And you see the overall map here. I'm not sure this did it justice. So I wanted to kind of show you like right, no, right <laughs> there, that white building like it is that's the tank and then all those new buildings of green and, and yellowish and, and reddish pinkish colors that's all the new construction that's going up and and that's just a small narrowed in scope uh it goes for blocks north and south of this that you can't really see here on this graphic so it's it's amazing how the a's are trying to do something new that's difficult the sharks are just trying to keep what they have and that's also difficult at least in terms of working with the city to say, hey, we're going to plan these projects out. We're going to protect this building and the venue and the people that come to it, ingress, egress, we're going to protect that at all costs. So all of that is going on. Then back to the actual teams at hand and the personnel and players at hand. I recognize this as a longstanding criticism of the A's. Like they move on too quickly from their core players. All the names I could mention, but let's just start with Chapman, Olsen, Bassett, Manaya, right? They move on from players that are just emerging, just becoming popular. You would like to see the A's re-sign those particular individuals on the long term, and they don't really do it. And then there are critics of the Sharks, the other team I cover and love, and the criticism is there that maybe they commit too long to core players. Again, I'm not here to say that what the A's are doing doesn't work because... It does. And for the most part, with the San Jose Sharks, only these last couple years, these last three years, they have not been in the playoffs. Every other year, they have a long track record of knowing exactly what they're doing to punch that ticket for the dance. So again, I'm I'm not necessarily agreeing with these criticisms, but I, I understand they're out there. So that kind of brings me to the overall state of these two franchises right now. And I, I, like I said before, the biggest thing is that there is just lots going on. There are fans who feel a million different ways. I respect how you feel. I know how I feel. I look around and I think, okay, if these are among the toughest times, right? Like if you're the Sharks, you're trying to get back up to where a high bar has been set. If you're the Oakland A's, you're trying to get in that new home to assure yourself 
you know, a generational future in Oakland. Like these are times where some fans are going to show their true colors. It's too hard to be a fan right now of the Sharks. Too hard to be a fan right now of the Oakland A's. Okay, I'm taking notice of who are the people sticking with this. Because what I truly want and hope for is that in three to five years, we have positive developments on both teams and both fronts. And it's like a couple years ago where the A's were punching playoff tickets and the Sharks were doing their thing on a regular basis. They were annual cup contenders. Sports are very cyclical. So I have no doubt, no reservation that things are going to improve here on both sides. But I am saying, I recognize right now, yeah, like these are, these are kind of difficult times. So let me know what you think all about that. And I appreciate if you're an A's fan only or a Sharks fan only, I appreciate you for watching this video and, and letting me make this comparison of two teams that I will stick with through thick and thin. And like I said before, I wish more people put the spotlight on these two clubs.